So our first guest today is Megan Salter. Uh, I met Megan a couple of months ago when I visited Douglas County. Uh, welcome, Megan. Hi, Larry. Thank you so much for having me. Well, thank you for being on the show. We, we love hearing what's going on around the state because uh, in addition to being common themes, there's, there are differences amongst them, and that's really cool to learn about. So you're running for House District 2, and uh, what's interesting about your race is that you <coughs> – you are uh, you get a pass in the primary because you don't have an opponent, mm -hmm. and but you have two two Republicans fighting it out for the Republican nomination, and then um, uh, then you'll face off the whoever wins the primary in November. So yes, yeah, so there are two Republicans in the race, but Dallas Heard, who was the incumbent, and he still is on the ballot as a Republican candidate for House District Two. He has been appointed to Jeff Cruz's old state Senate District 1 seat. And so, although there are two of them on the ballot, we assume that Gary Leaf will take the nomination because he has also been placed as the incumbent for House District 2. It's It's been a strange few weeks waiting for <laughs> conventions to figure out uh, what was you know, what was going to happen. But the race for me has never been about who I was running against. It's always been about what I am running for. And so... I've just been trying to focus on that, but it, it still is nice to have some answers and, and know who I will be opposing in the general election. Wow, it'll be interesting to see how many uh, people vote for the person who will, will not be winning. <laughs> yes, yes, it will be interesting on, on primary election night. We, we had a story from a canvasser saying that people were confused about the difference between a um, uh, voter's pamphlet and a ballot, wow. <laughs> which is not a good sign. No, no, no. There's a lot of education still to do. So tell us about your race and how are you positioning yourself in in a district that, that is tending conservative? So, you know, I'm just right now I'm going to a lot of events. I'm doing a lot of house parties and trying to just get my name out there and, and really talk to people locally and hear the issues that they're concerned about. It, you know, it is a very rural conservative area. And for the last several years, uh, it has been, the seat has been held by a Republican. But in the last election, you know, Dallas Heard ran unopposed. And so democracy doesn't work when, you know, one single person just continues to put their name on the ballot and win because of that. And so I'm, I'm honored to have my name on the ballot, to get my name out there, to be out there talking to voters and listening to their their issues, their concerns, and so we can work together because we're not seeing results down in Southern Oregon, and that's very unfortunate. When you're saying you're not seeing results, um, do you have some examples? Well, looking at the past voter record, um, it seems that the incumbent has just been no pretty much every single time. Um, and so it's unfortunate, you know, as Southern Oregonians, we often feel like we are left out of the conversation in Salem. And so as a Democrat in Southern Oregon, when elected, I get to be a part of the majority party and I get to raise the issues of Southern Oregonians in the state legislature and listen to their ideas, listen to what's working, work together in collaboration so that we can bring results back down here and solve a lot of the problems that we face. So what's the number one issue that people are, are, are wanting you to, to clean up when you get elected? You know, I think it comes down to, to jobs and the local economy. Um, there's not a lot of opportunity here. We, you know, we see high school students, they graduate high school and they leave because there's no opportunity here. There's no jobs. We have a lack of housing. And so those are all things that we need to work together to improve down here. So that, you know, not just high school students, but families. I've had a lot of friends that have had to leave the area because there, just, there aren't jobs here. What used to drive the economy in Douglas County? It, you know, timber. Timber's always been the backbone of our economy, but because of automation, we just, we don't have the same amount of jobs. And so, Although it's always been the backbone of our economy and will continue to be, we have to diversify. And uh, the diversification into other agricultural projects, products, how's that going? <laughs> <laughs> Slow, but 
you know, I think having a strong voice that will advocate for some change will be an important part of us creating change down here in, in Southern Oregon. So uh, what are, what are, uh, how do you, in, in, a, in a large district such as yours, how are you reaching out to the voters uh, outside of Roseburg? So I have found a, a good point person throughout the entire district and they're helping me um, create some meet and greets and do some house parties throughout district two. It is a very rural area. This, this isn't an area that we can just, you know, boots, put boots on the ground and, and knock doors. And so a lot of phone calls, we're doing a lot of postcards um, and going forward, we're just going to have to hold a large amount of meet and greets throughout the area. But um, I've connected with, with people throughout the area, especially people that are concerned about our library system and have worked to get the libraries back up and running in the, the rest of, of the area. And, you know, talking to them and being able to use their libraries to meet people, I think will be an essential part of this. Have, are the libraries still closed or is that still a, a, a work in progress? So the majority of the libraries are still closed, or I'm sorry, the majority of the libraries have actually reopened uh, on a volunteer basis, but the, the main branch here in Roseburg is still working on reopening the stores. They've, they've made progress and we hope to open um, by September, I think is, is the new date. Is, do you see yourself working in that in Salem or is that, that more of a local issue? I think, unfortunately, it will have to be a local issue. So I saw that you're vice chair of the Women's Caucus of the Democratic yes. Party. Well, that's cool. I was a uh, last year. Congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> um, what what are, are there any activities going on in the the Women's Caucus? You know, it's a very new caucus. We are just the second set of elected officials for it, and so. Shannon had done a great job of getting it set up and started, and so now we're working on, on a path forward, on trying to figure out what we want to do as a caucus and how to reach people in the state. And so I was happy to be elected to it because I do represent a rural organ on the caucus. And so, you know, right now we're, we're in discussions about candidates and, and how we can help women candidates throughout the state. Cool. So um, uh, there, I, I do have a map on one of the slides of your district, uh, mm. and it's it's really interesting. So it's it's on the I five corridor. Yes. Uh, you butt up against Jackson County, which has just done this incredible uh, turn left onto the political dial. Mm -hmm. Yeah, your your county remains fairly conservative. Yes, um, uh, you're up against District One, which. Um, uh, is extremely conservative. Uh, mm -hmm. Certainly, when you get into the lower, lower uh, uh, north southwestern part of the county. Mm -hmm. um, so, are uh, where, where, are and you, so you you have an interesting position where you don't have to run for the nomination. So you're gonna mm -hmm. you're gonna be the nominee for the Democratic Party for your district. Uh, but then you have to reach out to everyone for the general. Um, yes. Are you are you delving into the non-affiliateds? Non Absolutely. We have more non-affiliated voters in District 2 than Democrats. Uh, I believe it's 35% of people in the district are non-affiliated, whereas 25% are Democrats. And so that will be an absolutely essential part of our outreach. So we'll be making lots of phone calls and and in areas where we can knock doors, we will knock doors. And uh, have, have you, are you doing that now or are you holding that for the last half of your campaign? We have started uh, with phone calls right now. And then after the primary this summer, we are going to hit the ground running and, and start canvassing door to door. One of the things that, that, that I try to do is uh, uh, get candidates to speak out on issues and, and exhibit mm -hmm. leadership. Have, have you done anything like that, or are there issues that you could do that with to to uh, to to get the acknowledgement of being the the, mm. the preferred candidate? Absolutely, absolutely. Especially when it comes to education. My 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 background is in education. I have a BA in liberal studies and early childhood development. I spent several years in the classroom, and I also spent some time running the booster club at my child's school, and so. 
I understand the needs of today's students and teachers, and I also understand the need of addressing some reform in education right now. You know, we have to lower class sizes. We have to increase the high school graduation rate, especially here in Douglas County. Um, the last time I looked, I think it was a 74% graduation rate. So we need to focus on those things as well as increasing career and technical education which also offers some new paths for our high school students and to create some new industry for jobs here. So education is my background. It's something I'm very passionate about and something that I will continue to advocate for. In your district, would the, the uh, education have to be focused on the high schools or are there any uh, institutions where that, that could be bolstered? You know, I, I think we need to talk about education at all levels, you know, all the way from, from, early childhood education, you know, the first five program all the way up through high school and college. The, there, does, do all of your students have to go out of the district for uh, higher education once they graduate? We do have Umqua Community College. Um, it's just outside of District 2, but it's still right here in Roseburg. Um, and so we do have that as an opportunity. We do have a few new career technical education uh, facilities that are opening up in the area, and we're also working on um, a nursing school that's coming to town, hopefully. So, but, you know, when it comes to a four-year degree or anything in outside of that, yeah, they, they have to leave district too. Have you, have you waded into the PERS issue at all? I haven't. I know, what a quagmire. <laughs> yes, yes. It's absolutely something that has to be addressed. Yeah, it, it is. Tra I, I, I don't know. I don't know that much about how accounting is done at the state level, but uh, mm -hmm. it just seems like a, a uh, uh, it just seems weird to be dumping money into the educational system and then having more than what you just dumped into it, taken out because of the PERS issue. Mm -hmm. It seems mm -hmm. like the PERS issue should be separated and addressed separately so that, the, so that the educational system knows how much money they have to deal mm -hmm. with. Mm -hmm. um, are you finding the unions getting involved in, uh, in your election at all? Not yet. Unfortunately, you know, we don't have a lot of strong unions down here anymore like we used to, but I have reached out to several of them and, and we'll be discussing endorsements and, and, and listening to their issues pretty soon here. Is there anything you would like to add to the conversation? Uh, like how do people get in charge of, in touch with you? You can visit my website. It's www.megansalter.com. You can find out more about me, about my campaign. You can volunteer to help out and you can also donate. Cool. And, uh, and, you know, the great thing about the internet and uh, telephones is that anyone can help you. So, uh, Absolutely. you know, your races such as yours uh, often fly under the radar because of the focus on mm -hmm. uh, the more competitive ones, mm -hmm. uh, especially right now. But uh, we, we wish you the best in your campaign. Thank you. Yeah, oh, there's do, a couple yes. of questions. Yeah. Oh, uh, excellent. Yes, yeah, actually, uh, Randy Roberts has uh, a few questions. Uh, what about green energy and infrastructure? Absolutely, I think that's another way to create jobs locally and you know, investing in, in solar energy and other renewable energy sources, I think that's a viable solution going forward. Uh, another one is, would you try to, try to get marijuana funds to pay for investment mm -hmm. in your district? You know, it, it's really been an unfortunate down here that although it has been legalized in the state, we are not accepting the funds. And so it's not going anywhere. It's created a black market. And so I think it's something that we need to discuss. And it, it's going to take a lot of education within, within our community, I think. And what about support for universal pre-K and daycare? Mm, interesting. So my background is in the first five program. I spent a lot of time there and we definitely, definitely could use some help in that area. Uh, then how about two free years of college? I'm sorry, what was that? Two free years of college. Oh, uh, within a community college? I think that is a great idea. You know, it, providing incentives for our students 
to, to leave high school and to go into programs which will help them find jobs, that's an absolutely essential thing that we need to look at and work towards as a community. And that also includes trade schools? Mm-hmm, absolutely. So the, that's an important part of the conversation. And so have you recruited volunteers in high school and college for your campaign? Yes, I do have a few, and as they're wrapping up the semester, they are reaching out to their friends and talking to them, and so I hope by the summer we've, we've got a, a good, strong volunteer base of high school and college students that will help us get out the vote. I, I appreciate their voices. Um, you know, the, the, some of the high school students I talk to are so well-spoken. They are so educated on the issues, and they are so concerned about what is happening locally and I'm excited to have them as part of my team. And they really do give me hope for our future. Anything else, Betsy? Uh, those are all the questions. I just got to say, um, uh, congratulations for surviving the question gauntlet with Betsy. <laughs> <laughs> that was those were great answer. questions, and I appreciate it. Yeah, yeah, well done. Well, thank you, Megan. I'll let you get back to canvassing. Good luck with your campaign. Thank you so much, Larry. <laughs> Bye. See you soon. Bye.